This episode of OGAT Chat is brought to you by the Woodforge. The Woodforge, your number one dealer of handmade battle-ready wooden swords for style or combat, training or decoration. Located at the Shrewsbury Renaissance Fair and on Facebook.com slash Organ Woodforge. Warning. The OGAT Chat Podcast contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of OGAT Chat, the number one of Guards and Thieves podcasts on the interwebs. I'm Ty. My username in OGAT is Lick the Taint. And Luke's not here today again, but it's because it's another interview episode. Yeah, plus we're recording this one during the uh, the hiatus that I've announced before on the podcast where, you know, with school and time and whatnot, finding it difficult to find the time to record these things. So it's tough to get together with Luke when he's not busy and I'm not busy. But these interview things, if I can set it up with one person instead of with a whole Sorry, my wife is making a lot of noise in the kitchen. I hope that you can't hear it. <laughs> and uh, I am very tempted to make a wife in the kitchen joke. I I don't see why not. I mean, the joke's already been made. I talked about it. I mentioned it. I opened Pandora's box of kitchen utensils. Anyways, Jesus Christ. Sounds like a fucking tornado in there. I don't know what's going on. I wonder if we're being robbed right now and I just don't know it. I'm going to... Come out of the uh, come out of the Ogat studio and uh, find a masked man wielding a big knife. Maybe my uh, skills in Ogat will translate into real life, and I'll be able to kick some ass. That's not gonna happen. Anywho, I'm here with a special guest today. He is a member of one of the Mad Ball tournament teams. Last place. Yeah, come on, it's it's uh, it's our own team. It's one of my own team members. This is a pretty lazy interview, but hey, anybody's perspective on the game is good. Even these people that haven't played for a very long time or really care about the game all that much, it'll just be cool to get a fresh perspective, right? Come on. Plus, you got to give me credit. At least I'm actually recording something and it's not just another, hey, it's just me. How's it going? <laughs> I'm going to talk about the. I'm not going to do that bullshit. But before we get to the interview, I just want to give you guys a quick reminder that this episode of OGAT Chat is brought to you by the Woodforge. The Woodforge, your number one dealer of handmade battle-ready wooden swords for, what is it, style or combat, training or decoration? I think that's how it goes. <laughs> Not a very good ad read, I would say. But hey, they pay the bills, they keep the lights on. No, they don't. With that being said, let's get to our interview. As soon as he gets here, I'm going to be upfront and honest with you. I'm actually recording this opening stuff before the interviewee has entered the room. I just figured I'd get it out of the way beforehand. So I'm, you know, tick tock. Time is running out. I'm, I'm waiting here. He's kind of left me, uh, left me hanging. I, was, I sent him a message. I said, hey, let's record that episode. Let's get that interview done. He said, okay, just a sec. Now it's 10 minutes later. I'm in the recording uh, studio and he's nowhere to be found. It's a little insulting. I'm trying to decide how I want to pay him back for this, but nothing is really coming to mind. <laughs> Oh, there he is. Hey, right on. Hello. Hello. How, how are Hello. you? I am doing well. Thank you. Yes, it is. Uh, this is our interviewer. I already, I've already been recording the first like intro so that I could just get it out of the way. But okay, here he is. Our interviewee for the uh, OGAT chat interview series. I did not just come up with that name on the fly. Meninistic Trap Lord. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. How do you feel? How how are you uh how are you doing? Uh pretty well. All right. We're off to a great start. I can tell this is going to be a great interview. Yeah. Um 
So like I told you beforehand, I'm just going to ask you some questions. It's a pretty pretty standard fare as far as interviews go. So let's start off with the basics. How did you find the game of Guards and Thieves, sir, I assume? Uh, thank you for um, import- uh, inputting that you assume that my gender is male rather than just openly, you know, blanket stating that I am male because that might trigger me slightly. But... um. Yeah, I found the game of Guards and Thieves. My brother, which um, whose name shall not be named, and he was like, yo, I was playing this game, and it's like, pretty cool, you should probably play in this game. And I was like, yo, dog, I got you. And so I played it. That's great. I, your brother sounds like a really uh, fascinating individual. Do you want to give us any more information on this person? Um, well, I, for the longest time, I thought that he was... um. He was a little bit special growing up, but turns out he's a decent human being. Um, He's um, got small pectorals, but that's okay because it allows me to assert my dominance. Uh, Okay, I'm going to disregard that. that, uh, I'm going to disregard that pectoral statement. Um, Let's move on. Let's get to the Mad Ball tournament. So you're in one of the teams. You happen to be in the same team I am. How do you think the tournament's going so far? Uh, how the tournament went for us so far, I mean, um, pretty solid. We we blew a pretty good lead that we had on the other team that we were playing, which, can you remind me of the name of them? Uh, it was uh, BWA, Breadwinner Association, or if they were smart, they would have chosen Beggars with Attitude. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, yeah, we blew a big lead we had on BWA, but other than that, we we at least did have a lead in the first place, and we did win one of the games out of the best two of three. And so I think we competed fairly well. We just lost it in the end. We just absolutely shit our pants at the moment. Moment of truth. Uh, blow. I yeah, think it no, was like a is. seven point lead that we blew. I, I'm pretty yeah, sure we were up like 19 to 13 or 12 and then we lost. It's when uh, the pressure was on. Yeah, we, uh, we <laughs> failed. We, we cracked. We cannot Miserably. handle pressure. We are pathetic human beings. Yep. Time to die. Yep, basically. So uh, let's. Let's see, we've got three things. The next question I wrote down, three things you like about the game. Now, this can be anything. This can be three things that you like about the gameplay, three things you like about the graphic. It, it Fair game, open season, up to you. Give me some things, three specifically, that you like about Of Guards and Thieves. Three things that I like about number one. Uh, I really like the uh, like the aesthetics to it, like with the graphics and everything. When you're playing in the game, it's not like like realistic, so to speak. But uh, I kind of like that about it. I like the animation style, and I like the way that the characters look because I think they're uh, pretty. I'm thick. like Polini. Polini's pretty pretty cute. So you'll be then, happy to hear then, let me just uh, interrupt you real quick. You'll be happy to hear that they've been talking about, since you're not a member of the official Discord, you're not in the loop, their next big update, they're overhauling all of the character skins and also adding alternate skins to the game, it sounds like. So um, you'll basically what they're doing is they're taking all of the characters that are already in the game, they're slimming them down a bit, they're kind of shedding some pounds, they're cutting weight for a fight, and then they're getting a little taller too, so uh, yeah. So they're they're overhauling all of the character models in the next update, and they've been posting these uh, these screenshots of previews basically in the official Discord. I think you're gonna like how they uh, how they go about that. Yeah, I'm excited to see that. Yeah. Now, if uh, the next step for them is to get that update out in the next seven or eight years because that's about (laughs) the timeline that they've set for themselves at this point anywho continue on your uh you got two more things to go yes i do all right uh number two let's see here i enjoy uh the community to an extent um some of the community i would say is kind of um what's the word i'm looking for cancer uh like really try hardy and take it way too seriously for what it is but other than that i think a lot of the community is pretty pretty funny and easygoing so i'll also interject right here uh let me just say 
if you want to keep thinking that, if you want to continue having this good image of the community, stay the fuck away from the official server. Continue. Okay. Yeah, I will. Um, but yeah, and for the most part, from who I played with, I can make some jokes or whatever while I'm playing the game, and they'll joke back, and it's not you know cringe or cancer. Once in a while, there is definitely some um, tryhards that are not my favorite particular people. Are you going to name any names, or do you want to keep it on the uh, down low? It's totally up to you. You're not a member of the Discord. All right, all right, all right. I respect I'll keep that. It on the cool. Uh, what else? Yep. You got one more thing in your three things. All right, one more thing. Um, I'm going to have to say soccer. Just soccer in general. Fuck yeah! Because, um, being a being an illegal immigrant from Mexico has really given me given me such an interest in soccer, and the fact that they added it into the game is just really it just hits home to my culture with all my um, MS13 friends. I just really think that the inclusion of soccer in the game just my likeness to it, it tenfold. It really does bring an inclusivity that the game needs. It's uh, it's very. It is. It's, that's the way to describe it. Inclusive. It allows players of all cultures to come together around a singular point of gameplay. It's it's really beautiful when you stop to think about it. So oh, beautiful. It makes me cry. <laughs> Shit. That was really racist. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny, though. Um, all right. Now that we got that out of the way, what are three things that you would change? I have, I, as I told you before... We do have proof now that the developers listen to this podcast. At least one of them does. And even at that, he has listened to one episode. So who knows if uh, they've continued to listen. But the things that you offer as a solution of change that you think could improve the game, they might fall on the ears of the people actually in charge of changing the game's state. What do you got for them? Um, if I were to change anything, I would think there would be some more uh, diversity among the characters. I think that there's way too many white cisgender males and it kind of triggers me for their character selection. It, only at times though. I think that there should be some more um, African Americans and um, Mexicans and um, Asians for their character selection. Cause I think that that's like we said before, inclusive. I think you should include all of the genders of the world my gender, I, I sexually identify as a trap lord, but if you sexually identify as Asian, if your gender is um, African Asian, then so be it. I, I, I have it to agree with you there. I really think that the devs, they're doing a good job as it is. You do have the African American carrier. You also have Marfello, uh, I believe. Yes, is, of course, Marfello. Is Marfello Brazilian? I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know what ethnicity and i wouldn't dark yes yes dark complexion that's a good way to put it i would never dare to assume his true ethnicity but they have some diversity in characters but they could really do with more you could always have more diversity as you said uh i do find it a little upsetting that there's no transgendered characters um yeah like tracy or you know riley they should really be adding some more of like that. And what, what? Where's the piercings? I mean, dyed hair. Why can't we have this? It would. It wouldn't be that hard to take Polini's model and add a pair of tits. Am I right? Yeah. But the only problem with that is then I can't play the game at that point. I just nut. <laughs> all right, I'm cutting some of that, not all of it, but definitely some. <laughs> at, that, of it. at that point, I just beat off. I can't play the game. <laughs> I'm definitely cutting the tits and, uh, but, uh, anyways, um, well, all right. So we got diversity. What else would you give to the developers for improvement? Um, if anything else, maybe just more equipment in the game. I think that there's selection. I mean, at the same time though, there could be different kinds of weapons. I think that you could put into the, incorporate into the game, rather than just because they basically just have assault rifles and pistols and then the flamethrower 
And so I think it would be kind of cool if you could put some new stuff like a grenade launcher or something, you know, just new and into the game. And I think that goes the same for like the equipment. I think there's a decent amount of it. And this isn't really saying that they've done a bad job or anything like that. But if they added, you know, uh, something new, some kind of new trap or whatever it may be, then I, I think that would be kind of fun just because the game's getting older. Like it, it's getting like not like older in a bad way, but it's been around for a while. And I think adding new content like that is always a good thing. Yeah, it's a good point. And you, especially from your perspective, this would actually jokes aside, this would be good for the developers to hear because you would describe yourself as a casual player, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah. You're on line a few hours a week, maybe, but you're still coming back. It's it's not the perspective of somebody who's been playing for three, four years, who's jaded about the game. This is the perspective of someone who just recently got into the game within the past, what, six months. And uh, it's I think that yours is a good perspective for them to have that you've only been playing the game for so long, but you're already having these ideas, these concerns yeah, and, uh, and I don't have some deep seated love for the game or anything like that, where it's nothing's wrong with it. I I'm looking at it from a pretty blank state of view, like point of view. Like if a game's presented, if this game's presented to me and it's fresh and stuff like that, when I find these certain things, it, it's not like, I don't know, I'm not hazy in my views. I'm just looking at the game as it is and something beneficial for it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, those are all good ideas. I've also come up with the idea for traps. I think it would be cool to have something like a uh, like tripwires. Uh, you could that's add exactly it for what I was yeah, yeah. Either team could do it. You could figure out some way to throw some trip with different uh, reactions to what happens when you actually trip the wire. Yeah. You could have a glue trip wire, an explosive trip wire, uh, flame trip, whatever. But it would add new ways of map Playing control. Yeah, just. Yeah different strategies and whatnot. Anyways, uh, one more thing. What else would you change if you were to talk to the developers right now? Uh, again, not much else. I mean, maybe if I had to pick something for the last one, uh, maybe another game mode would be kind of cool. Uh, I think that there's, again, a good amount of game modes for sure on uh, OGAT, but like maybe some other kind of... Um, even if it's something as simple as like hardcore team deathmatch where it's everyone's one shot or uh, I don't know, uh, flamethrowers only or melee only. I think it would just be kind of fun. I could see the melee only, the flamethrower, that kind of thing makes sense. But uh, Instagave is already one shot team deathmatch. Uh, yeah, except it's rail guns. Yeah, I guess. But, it's true. Yeah. It is kind of a different, uh, you could have automatic one hit kill weapons, but. Well, all right, that was a great perspective. Now let's move on. Let's get to the final segment of the show. Everybody's favorite part of OGAT chat. Say it with me. Bug, Bug of, of the week. week. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Again, this is going to yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be just like uh, when I had casual YouTuber 31 on. You're going to take charge. You're going to tell us about your favorite bug rather than me go into detail about one of the bugs of which there are many give it to us what is your favorite bug in of guards and thieves thank you lick the taint thank you lick the taint i'll be talking about a bug that i believe was the first bug on the show which was the bug with the guardian class where you can use your riot shield and go around uh certain structures in the game like um something like a vent or colored what what would those be called like so colored? the force field things um force field. Yeah. i'll i'll correct you a little bit I, it's a good bug everyone hates it it's uh i it should be gone in the next update according to the developers but uh what we had talked about was specifically using the guardian to get around the force field the colored ones that only your team yeah. can get through at the time we didn't even know about the the more pressing issue of the guardian that can be used to get out of the office map and other maps as well. Uh, yeah, it's such fucking cancer. I hate it so much. 
that's exactly why I love it is because it's cancer and it's just stupid. It's so bad. It's I don't have any problem with the bug. You can't have problems with bugs. It's not like the developers intended for it to get into the game. So I guess you can have problems with them, but you you can blame that it's a weird gray area. You can blame them for it and you can, you know, it's their fault because they're the ones coding the game. But on the other hand, it's not like they intended it to be there. So the fact that people are exploiting it, you can get just as pissed at people for exploiting it and spreading it around. Um, it's, yeah, it, it only it, irritates it, me when people use it to win matches. It's uh, pretty common right. on team deathmatch. The massive servers folks will use it to get, through the office walls uh, down on the right side of the map into whatever C1 or whichever offices are there on the right side. And it's just fucking retarded. So I'm yeah, glad to I, hear I agree with you there. Like when, if they're using it to win a match or like actually to gain an advantage, then I think that that's re- kind of ridiculous. But when it's just kind of for dicking around, so to speak, it's, I think it's funny as hell. So, so. <laughs> what's your opinion on this? Since you're not a member of the official Discord, you won't know this. This is going to be a fret, a fresh, hot off the presses take on this issue. Hey, everybody. It is your uh, dungeon master, your best friend, your uh, romantic lover. No, I'm just here to let you know that what we're about to talk about is a little outdated. When we recorded this, obviously it wasn't outdated, but uh, since the date of this recording, the bug issue entirely with the carrier, God, I always said carrier, with the Guardian has been fixed. What I am about to say about the developers not taking any action against people who abuse the bug, uh, that became fake news. They did, in fact, change their policy and really start, uh, I mean, they banned a guy, outright banned a guy for doing it repeatedly and so good on them i just wanted to get that out there hey if you guys are listening because i know that you have in the past thank you for fixing this issue because it was a pretty big deal and we're all glad that it's taken care of anywho back to the interview we've brought it up in the there's a support and report channel in the official discord for bugs for players that are breaking the rules whatever it's like they refuse to take the developers are not saying that they're refusing to take action against people using that bug to win matches, but they don't do anything about it. They don't even mention it. We can report people in the support and report channel saying, Hey, this person, and they're even in some cases they're in the discord and we'll tag their name and say, this fucker is using that bug to score points on team deathmatch or whatever. And nothing ever happens. What do you think of that? Uh, I think that, I think that they should take action. I don't know if the person, you know, said accused should be banned per se, but because, I mean, it's not like they're, you know, hacking the game or something like that. They're just exploiting, uh, is already there, which, but I think that that is still taking advantage and it's, it's stupid. I mean, I think that it's unfair. So I think that the, um, developers, should crack down on it and definitely, you know, warn people, maybe give them a couple warnings and then pot potentially ban them. I guess if they, they, they have temporary ban capabilities too, they can ban people for like a month or whatever. They've done that before. Yes. Something like that would probably, yeah, be good to discourage you exploiting the bugs that are there. And then I think that they need to get to work on those kind of bugs because people are going to exploit them until they're gone. Yeah, that's for the true. Most part. It's, it is kind of, um, one could also argue that maybe they should because the track record of the developers has been to rather than release quick hot fixes, which they have done, but not very common. They usually just wait to fix a bunch of bugs with the major updates. So yeah. you, you get an update to the game, at least a public update. They don't uh, if they are releasing small hot fixes and whatnot, it's not public. They're doing it behind the scenes and we don't know about it. So I could be totally wrong. But based on their Steam, you know, the community and all that, the information that we get there, the only time they fix these bugs is on their major updates, which are once a year, maybe. So maybe they should uh, consider, if you're listening, sirs, consider, uh, you know, getting on that shit, huh? Getting us some updates a little quicker. Yeah, maybe. 
Yeah, the only problem I think that with, that with uh, updating it all at once, like when they do their big update, incorporating all those little bug fixes, is when they make those big updates, and there's going to be five more bugs by the time when yeah. they release it. So <laughs> it's okay though, because yeah, it keeps I, the uh, it keeps the bug of the week segment alive when we have new bugs to shit talk. It's true. That's true. But these old bugs that you've already shit talked, I mean, they need to. They should really be start working on them. <laughs> I'm sure they, they are already. too. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. that they're they're. Fi- I mean, I know they are. They're they've mentioned it that the carrier or the uh, guardian bug should be gone in the next update, and that's more of a physics bug. I think they were saying it's. I don't even know. I wouldn't dare to assume to know anything about development or coding or whatever they're working on. But uh, I know that they've talked about fixing it. I know that they're working on it. It would just be nice for them to maybe focus on that specifically and get it out as quick as possible instead of yeah. lumping it in with everything else. Anyways. Well, I think yeah. that was a solid interview. Do you have anything that you need to plug? Do you have like a, I don't think you do a YouTube channel or a Twitch or anything like that, that you want to, that you want to plug while you're here. Uh, you got a butt plug. That's <laughs> yes. That's exactly what I was looking for. And now, uh, I I really don't know where to go with that. I, <laughs> I thought maybe I could pull something right. out of my ass, but yeah. uh, I didn't yeah, really. No, I, I, I don't I don't have any plugs. I'm a simple man, and uh, I'm just from Kentucky. I'm from a- Alabama too. I'm just here with my cousins, Buckaroo. That's all I got. Yay! Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks for coming on the podcast, giving us an episode uh, while I'm in the the hiatus mode. Uh, but we will, I guess, see you around in game. And then as we always like to say here on, uh, Ogat chat, have a great day. A fantastic day. Yeah. Just kidding. Have a great day. Yeah. A great day. Yay. Great day. Great day. All right. Thank you. Thank you.